So welcome to another episode of NBA 2K16 News with your host, Shakedown2012. Well, I'm going to barrel through this. The good news is patch 3 for NBA 2K16 is here. And we've got a lot of information, too much to cover, so I don't want to ramble for too long. Let's dive into this. Some of the changes to the general experience of the game, they added new support to view the uniform your opponent selects prior to starting a Play Now online game. That's huge because I heard a lot of people complaining about that. They improved the results of face scanning. Does this mean that I can now scan my face on the Xbox One and finally get it done right? Primary jersey and primary shorts colors are now used to determine both accessory and sock colors when using custom built uniforms. That's great because now we can actually match our accessories properly when playing in custom oh, arenas. Gameplay, ah. they tuned the hold ball too long event in the teammate grade logic to be a little bit more forgiving. Thank God. We no longer give an allow offensive rebound Don't teammate grade penalty after blocking an opponent's shot. See, that, that actually happened to me a couple of times. Pass receivers are now less likely to veer away from the basket to catch a pass. That's huge. I've had so many passes go into the lane and get blocked because the guy went in the wrong direction. They improved CPU logic for when you should and should not use LU passes. Does that mean they fixed the Chris Paul glitch? They tuned up the body up system to prevent subpar defenders from being overly effective at stopping the ball handler. What I want to know is how does that translate over to Hall of Fame difficulty? They fixed a frequent hitch in the dribble system seen when branching into certain dribble collisions. They tightened up crowded dribble launches to prevent unwanted hesitations oh, when attempting right. to drive to the basket. Wow, I cannot wait to experience. <laughs> <laughs> the crossover animations now without the That's auto hesitations. Out, uh... They tuned down excessive flopping being performed by AI players. Some of you guys saw that in the top 10 plays of the week this week. They addressed the issue of camping in my oh, park man. games by one, disabling the set screen button within six feet of the basket. <laughs> so no more of the bigs under the basket holding their nuts. Number two, allowing users to initiate off-ball contact hey. with screen setters near the rim. Oh! oh. <laughs> <laughs> and three, by adding offensive three-second rules to half-court games. I wonder how that's gonna play out on the park. They tuned the dribble system in order to tone down the effectiveness of the behind the back dribble moves and zigzagging back and forth to get open. So I wonder if all those cheese videos that people are putting out are, are still gonna be effective. This is the reason why I make legit dribble tutorials instead of cheese tutorials. They made the dive for loose balls more accurate and more likely to acquire the ball. So I guess there's not gonna be any more shaking of fools when diving for the ball. They reduced the frequency of unwanted contested shot fadeaways. That's huge, I know my buddy Styles couldn't stand that. They increased the difficulty in stealing the ball from the post players. And that is something that my buddy Godzilla couldn't stand. Every time you get the ball in the paint, he gets ripped. They made low-rated shot blockers less accurate and capped their jumping verticals. That's something that me and Case Fane talked about. That at least for the for the point guards, they had to cap them somewhere. That, that's too it was way too excessive for little guys getting blocks. They adjusted stationary hop jumper shooting percentages to make them a more viable option on offense. Improvements to the logic system for when ankle breakers should play out and when they should not play out. And they tuned back the frequency of missed dunks in traffic. Now moving on to the park and the pro-am. You now have the ability to design an away uniform oh, no. for your pro-am team. The appropriate uniform will be worn depending on if your team is home or away for the current game. That's huge. Man, I want to get on right now and design my away jersey. The correct overall rating for your my player will now be shown on the pro-am loading screen. A lot of guys were complaining about that. They made CPU players that take over for quitting users less effective in the Pro-Am. Now, I'm, just, I'm interested in seeing that because usually when somebody quits, oh, that 90 overall is still balling like a 90 well. overall. A Pro-Am game will end immediately with a win if all opposing players have quit out the game. Quit deterrents have been added to defer users from quitting out of the Pro-Am games. 
Too many quits will result in a short-term inability to play the mode. Man, that really sucks for Patriot. He's probably never going to get a chance to play the Pro-Am with me again. <laughs> They removed the 10 second delay that would occur before the start of a game to 21 in my park. And I've talked about that before too. Got tired of waiting because of these weird delays. My career and my court changes. They added support for crowd members to hold up big head posters of your my players. That's awesome. Users should now start seeing photo bombs again. Once they reach their second NBA season in my career, I was wondering where the photo bombs went. They improved play vision to better help you understand what you should be doing on offense in my career. And I was thinking, I was like, I'm running so many pick and roll plays because I can't see the play art. I don't know what to do. And my team is calling plays and I don't even know what I'm supposed to be doing. And last but not least, Sock Link is now customizable for your My Player via the 2K Sports Store. I know a lot of you guys have been complaining about sock length and I'm glad that they finally fixed that. Obviously I skimmed through this, there's lots more to discover. If you click the link in the description, they have my GM and my league as well as more information pertaining to the other categories that I discussed. So obviously a few of you guys are thinking, man I wish this was already in the game. How did 2K put out an incomplete game? Well, in a lot of cases, some of these things are undiscoverable until the community gets their hands on it. But I do stand by a lot of you guys that believe that, man, some of this should have been looked into prior to the release of the game. But at the end of the day, I'm happy that these changes have been made early, at least within the first two months of the game's release, as opposed to six months down the road. I look forward to seeing you guys out there on the park and in the Pro-Am. It's your boy Shake. If you like this video, smack that like tab to show your support. Definitely subscribe if you're new to the channel. And I will be back, as usual, with some more NBA 2K16 news for you guys later. Oh, and one! Get off me! <laughs> Sit your ass down.